Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to talk about a new reveal from Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. It is a very, very important card. Yeah, it's a tall card, but this is going to be one you see in so many decks. Over and over and over, pretty much for the next three years. This is going to be a deck you see a huge amount of. Now, it's apparently called Competitive Belt. Now, I didn't translate the name of this card. That was a lovely Antoine Boulet. I did translate the effect of this card. Although it is worth noting that I did check with the lovely Antoine Boulet just to make sure. And I was right. Yay. But what we've got here is Competitive Band. Band, sorry, not Belt. Sorry about that. And we've got a tool card that says, if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, attacks on the Pokemon this card is attached to deal 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And the reason I can say with such certainty that this is going to see a huge amount of play is because we've seen this before. This kind of fits into a genre of tool card, and we've seen a bunch of examples of these over the years, and they always see a huge amount of play. I mean, the first card we need to compare it to right off the bat is Choice Belt. Because right now, we've got Choice Belt. And there's no doubt about it. Choice Belt is an absolutely flat-out, ridiculous, no-question, hands-down, proper-job, phenomenal card. You can go over to websites like Limitless TCG and check out their tournament and go and click on basically whatever you want. And whatever list you click on, the majority of them are going to be playing Choice Belt. They might not play a huge amount of them. It might be a one or two tech. But we see Choice Belt just seeing a huge amount of play all over the place. Because it does 30 more to your opponent's active Pokemon V. It's a good thing. Good card sees a huge amount of play. The problem is that card... Over the next couple of years, because this has actually only came out in Brilliant Stars. It's on Regulation Mark F. This year, in a couple of months' time, we're going to be rotating Regulation Mark D. In early 2024, we're going to be rotating Regulation Mark E. And in early 2025, we're going to be rotating Regulation Mark F, including Choice Belt. So Choice Belt isn't actually going to be rotating for over two years. It's a very, very, very safe bet that we are going to have this card until somewhere in the region of probably around late February, early March 2025. That's what we're expecting. I know we are rotating a bit later this year. We're rotating in mid-April, but that is two weeks after the release of Scarlet and Violet, which would usually be a February set, but has been... Instead, it's coming out in March for various reasons. Point is, I'm expecting it to rotate when our February 2025 set becomes legal, which should be end of February, middle of March 2025. The point is... Was that a bit too deep? The point is, this card is going to be around for a while. But this card very specifically targets Pokemon V. And it only targets Pokemon V. And with the advent of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, we've got Pokemon EXs like Miraidon and Coridon. And we also know that we are going to get Terrastal EXs like, for instance, Arcanine. It's the only one we've actually seen so far. So my point is that over the next, I don't know, few months, couple of years, whatever, we are going to see Pokemon Vs, even before they've all rotated out, and V-Stars and V-Max and all of that, we're going to see them gradually being replaced by Pokemon EX. Because we all see that as new sets come out, better Pokemon tend to be printed, so Vs are going to kind of fade away and EXs are going to come out. Which makes a card like Choice Belt kind of irrelevant, honestly. Because as Vs get less and less and less good... Choice Belt is going to be less and less good. And unless a significant proportion of the player base is playing Pokemon Vs, including V Max and V Star, you can't really justify playing this. Because it's not going to be good enough often enough. Actually, I should mention, because I didn't make this clear enough a minute ago, we did actually get a reprint of Choice Belt. 
So Choice Belt itself is actually going to survive the rotation into regulation mark G and won't be rotating until early 2026. But every single card, it lets you hit extra damage on Vs, Vmaxes, Vstars, Vunions. Every single one of those will rotate out in early 2025, at which point Choice Belt will be irrelevant. It will literally have no relevant effect on any Pokemon in the game. So, yes, technically it is going to survive the rotation, but it's not really going to survive the rotation now, is it? And Choice Belt's great. But if everybody's running around playing that new Guard of War EX that looks really good, or Miraidon EX that looks really good, who's going to want to play Choice Belt? The answer, just to spoil it for you, is nobody. Nobody is going to want to play Choice Belt, because what's the point? It's not doing enough, it's not doing anything, to be honest with you. What you want is a card that can help, and now we've got this, which, and I know a bunch of people have said this, and I'm 100% in agreement, it should just be called Counter Belt. Like, if we're honest here, it should definitely be called Counter Something, or Counter Band, because we had that little run of Counter Cards back a little while ago, back in the Sun and Moon era. We had Counter Catcher, that was automatic gusting if you had prize cards remaining more than your opponent. Counter Energy, that as long as it wasn't on a GX or EX, provided two of any energy if you were behind on prizes. And we had Counter Gain, that if you had more cards, cards men in your opponent, you could attack for one colorless energy less. The Counter Cards were legit. And now they're gone. And they, they were, to be clear, they were Sun and Moon era cards. Like, Counter Catcher came around in Crimson Invasion. Counter Energy came around in Crimson Invasion. And Counter Gain came around in Lost Thunder. They've been gone for some time at this stage. But that's the vibe we're getting here. And I don't know if you guys were playing during the Sun and Moon era. But I was very heavily. And these cards were good. And they all saw a bunch of play. They were good. This is good. This will see a bunch of play. And we've seen other cards like this in the past. I mean, one which I remember because I attached it to the wrong Pokemon and literally threw away my pretty much guaranteed win, and according to my opponent, actual guaranteed win, in top eight of the largest tournament in Europe, not that I'm bitter, was Silver Bangle. Back in Plasma Blast, Silver Bangle was a thing, and it let you do 30 more two Pokemon EXs, as long as it was not attached to... A Pokemon EX. Because of this card, for a long time, people actually mistranslated. When it was first revealed in Japanese, a lot of people mistranslated Choice Belt and then started sharing around the wrong translation. People were saying that it only actually worked when attached to a non-V. Never said that, incidentally. But you know what it's like. One or two people make a mistranslation, share it around, and everybody just assumes it's correct. Hey-ho. But Silver Bangle was another card that saw a huge amount of play. I played a lot of Silver Bangle. That was my jam. And like I say, I attached it to a bench Pokemon, not my active, and lost my top eight game in the biggest tournament in Europe. And I'm dumb for doing that. And I feel dumb for doing that. But Silver Bangle was a great card. And Choice Belt is a great card. And even something like Muscle Band... Which really wasn't, you know, a huge amount of extra damage. It was an extra 20 rather than an extra 30, and that 10 makes a difference. Muscle Band, that was just a straight 20 more to anything. That saw a huge amount of play. And we don't need to ask the question as to whether this card is going to see play and whether this card is good, because it is good and it is going to see play. Because in a world where cards like Silver Bangle and Choice Belt saw play, this does the same kind of thing. And in a world where those counter cards like counter energy and counter games all play, and they did, well, this is the same kind of thing. And everything about this tells us this is exactly, exactly the kind of card that is going to see a huge amount of play. And that doesn't mean every deck. And that doesn't mean a four of in the decks where it is seeing play. It means it is a kind of card that you have to have in mind. But it's also a card which is going to make playing the game way more fun. Because there are going to be games where you're playing against an opponent who is 10, 20 or 30 damage away from getting a key KO. And you are are tied on prizes. So if you take a KO, that activates your opponent's competitive band, 
and it means that they can then go and take their key KO and you go and lose the game. So what you do instead is you spend that turn setting up an end your turn without taking a KO. Maybe you do a bit of setup damage. Maybe you just set up your board a bit more to stop your opponent taking that key KO to win a turn later. And we're going to see people losing games because they're not paying attention and they activate their opponent's competitive band. And I love cards like this. I love cards that force you to play just a little bit more carefully. It makes me very happy. The fact that it can do extra damage to anything, it's good. It's going to see a bunch of play. And really aggressive decks aren't going to play it, obviously. But come on, ladies and gentlemen, this is awesome. But now it's over to you guys. I want to know what you think about this card. I want to know how much play you think it's going to see. I want to know anything you want to tell me. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about, well, Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash pttgradio, where you can support the channel. You can get some bonus podcasts where I answer all of your questions and join a Discord where we chat about Pokemon and a bunch of other stuff and get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Jolene Renji, who's been a supporter of ours for a few months now and is a very lovely person indeed. So thank you very much for all the support and for being a very lovely person indeed. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.